today we're going to be crafting at the kitchen sink. I'm going to show you how to do a gel medium decal and one other gel medium transfer technique. There are tons of different transfer techniques out there using all kinds of different products and methods. Um, I'm just going to show you these two today. The decal technique is actually one of my favorites. Um, I use it a lot. It is this was this was made with a gel medium decal. This image, this girl, and there's some like cloudy stuff in the background, and that came out of a wedding magazine. I think she's modeling the wedding dress, but I just thought it was so pretty, and it has kind of a kind of an ethereal look, almost like she's floating. So, you know, stuff like that makes really good decals because they're transparent, so you can see the background through it. So I made a decal out of her. I glued her onto this background paper, which was a piece of hand-painted paper. I think it was probably drop paper because it's kind of a mess, just a mottled, colorful, pastel-y looking mess. Glued her onto that paper and then glued the paper onto, this is the cover of one of my finished journals. I painted around the outside to mimic the colors that were in the painted paper showing through the transfer. So that's easy. It's very, very easy to do. It's actually one of the more um, consistent transfer techniques. You know, transferring is hit or miss, and it's usually a lot of miss <laughs> before you get the hang of hitting. <laughs> but this one is, is fairly good at, at turning out consistently well. There are some tricks. Let me show you. These are some decals that I've made. Yesterday I thought, I wonder if this would work on painted paper. Well, you know what? It did. This was a piece of painted paper. I think it was watercolored. And I made the decal out of. It will work on text, black and white, or white and black, whatever. See that one? It will work on magazine pages. Calendar pages are good. National Geographic, some of those really pretty landscapes and, and backgrounds, they, they just make great transfers. And that one, I think that came out of a catalog. Um, so I'm going to show you how to make these. And I'm going to give you a couple of tips. If you've made these before, you know that there is a common problem with the white haze on the back. Sometimes it's kind of hard to get off. You may not know what I'm talking about, but I don't know if you can see it. But this, the top of this, is after I had removed all of the paper as much as I could and really thought that I had the thing completely done, all of the paper completely off. After it dried, I did not. It was still white. This was after I did my super secret special technique <laughs> that I'm going to show you <laughs> that removes that white haze that can sometimes be such a pain. <laughs> it's that paper haze is what I usually call it. Okay, so you need images, um, photocopied images from a toner-based photocopier will work, laser printed images off your laser printer will work. Inkjet images off of your inkjet printer will not work. Um, give you an idea of what happens. This image right here was cut out of a magazine or a catalog. I can't remember which one it was. It's been a while. And before I uh, made the decal out of her, I copied her and printed her out on my inkjet printer and tried to make a decal out of that. And this is what you get. You lose your color. Yeah, when you peel the paper backing off, most of the color just comes right with it. So this is not a good way to use uh, printouts from your inkjet uh, printer, home printer, if that's what you have at home. 
Um, photocopies and laser prints are fine. I don't have easy access to photocopies and laser prints. You know, for me, that requires a trip to Kinko's, and that's, you know, effort, which I am morally opposed to. So, I tend to stick to mostly pages from magazines, catalogs, calendars, uh, things like that. And that's what I'm going to show you today. I am going to show you the second technique. We'll use those inkjet images off of your home printer. So never fear. We've, we've got a use for those. But we're, today we're going to concentrate on the magazine images with this technique. Now what you will need besides your magazine images, you're going to need some gel medium. You're going to need gloss medium. I don't have any gloss gel medium. All I have is matte on hand. And, you know, I can use this for our second technique, but for this one, you really want to have gloss. The reason is because matte finished gel medium is going to dry a little bit hazy because it's got that matte finish. Gel, uh, gloss gel medium is going to dry completely clear, and that's what you want. So you need gloss gel medium. The only gloss medium that I have is this one, Omni Gel, which is an absolutely awesome transfer medium. You can buy this uh, on Amazon. It's a speedball product. I'm nearly out of it. It dries uh, shiny. It dries glossy. It dries really fast. Um, so that's what I'm going to use. I may talk about, you know, gel medium, even though I'm using Omni Gel, same thing. They work the same way, so don't get confused about that. So that's what you need. You're going to need something to brush it on with. You're going to need an old toothbrush. Like if you have one that you use for cleaning, that would be good. Um, nothing too stiff, you know, kind of soft bristles will be fine. Your, um, your image. Let me put this down here and find my image. I had one set aside to use. Where is it? Here it is. <laughs> I think I got this out of Communication Arts, and it just made me laugh. So that's what we're going to use. First thing we're going to do is put our gel medium on there. You're going to need probably at least four coats, maybe more. It just depends on how thick you put it on, um, you know, the brand that you're using. Are you using regular medium? Are you using soft? You know, lots of variables, but uh, you're usually four coats will do. So what you do, you take your medium, squeeze it on, brush it. And for your image, for this particular technique, you don't have to trim it perfectly. You don't have to fussy cut it. You know, this has a white border around it. And after we peel the paper off, these white areas are going to be clear. They're going to be see-through. So you don't have to worry about that. This one I brushed up and down. You want to let this dry. And then the next coat, you want to do side to side. And then the third coat, you can go back up and down or maybe diagonally. You know, vary the, the brush strokes for each coat that you do. Let's see, this already almost dry to the touch. The stuff dries so fast. Let's set this aside. Now, I'm going to show you some that I've already uh, put several coats of medium on and I'll let them dry. I did these last night. And these are just like National Geographic. That's a magazine. This is some of my jelly print paper. This is another one of those I wonder what would happen if. I don't know if this is going to work. We're going to try it. That's a calendar page. That is out of a, that may be out of a um, Ballard catalog. I'm not sure. This one, I think, was National Geographic, as was this one. And that's another calendar. So these have got, I think I put four coats of the gloss gel on them and let them dry. 
And the next step is to soak them in water because you're going to soak them and then you're going to peel all of the paper backing off. So I think I'll just fill up this other side of the sink with water and let them soak over there. So let me do that. Okay, These little guys are soaking in just plain warm water and try to give them try to give them at least 15 minutes if you can I get impatient but the longer you leave them the easier they are to peel so try to give them 15 minutes while those are soaking I'll show you some other ones I have these images I, I did several years ago and I keep them in uh, my binder in like little baseball card sheets, sheet protector things. I just keep them in there, pull them out when I need one. And um, they're not glued down yet. I've just been, you know, finding different kinds of backgrounds to put them on. I really like to put them on painted papers. This is a really good use for some of your painted papers if you're not quite sure what to do with them. And you just, it depends on the image. See, this image works really well on this busy painted paper, whereas most of them would not. The image would get lost. Sometimes this happens. This doesn't bother me. If they tear, you know, it's a transfer. It's not going to be perfect. If you want a perfect duplicate image, now, for heaven's sakes, make a copy. <laughs> the transfer is not what you want if you want a perfect, complete image. <laughs> you have to be okay with some tearing and imperfections when doing transfers or these decals. <laughs> I keep a box of uh, little background papers. It's this keep it in a cigar box. These are some of my painted papers that have been cut down to ATC size. And I've just got all kinds of those. And then these are index cards, or Rolodex cards, that most of them are cleanup sheets, but some are just kind of backgrounds waiting for a little something something, you know? So, anyway, I'll try to pull from there first. And I pulled these out because I have four of these girls, and they look perfect on here. Now let me show you something, and I don't know with the camera how well you're going to be able to tell. Okay, these these are the girls on this background. This is the um, gel side up. This is the side right here where I brushed the gel on. It has the glossy finish. I almost never glue my decals down like this. I always turn them over. This is the side that had the paper on it that we peeled off. Or that I'll show you in a minute. This is the side that I like to put up. Now, I don't know if you can tell the difference in the clarity of the image, but there is a difference and it, it's actually in some cases pretty significant I like this side up always for that reason <laughs> I rarely make transfers out of text because this is the gel side right here this is my shiny side this is the side that I normally don't like to be facing up. I like it glued down to the paper, but when you flip it, so I've got my side that I prefer, then all the text is backwards. So for that reason, I rarely make decals out of images that have text on them. So there you go. And that is just a matter of personal preference. You don't have to turn yours over. I, I do. I just, I prefer them. And I wish you could see better the difference because it to me it it is different. There is a um, there is just a noticeable difference. And I, I like making ATCs out of transfers because well, first of all, things like this when they rip, I'm going to use it ripped just like that. 
I will probably glue it on just like that and I will glue this piece on and I will scooch it down just a little bit so that you can see the rip and I will glue it like that. So when they do rip, I work with it. I make it part of the design. I don't try to glue it back perfectly and hide it. You can if you want, but I, I like to use it. So ripping and holes, they're okay. They don't bother me. Oh yeah, here's a tip. If you can, and I almost always fail at this, try not to get any medium on the back. I pretty much always get it around the edges, which um, makes it makes kind of a, a hard ridge when you go to peel it. You'll see. And that almost can't be avoided. But yeah, try not to get it on the back. It's not the worst thing in the world. It just makes it a little difficult to peel the paper off. So let's give these guys another coat. And this time we're going to go side to side instead of up and down. Oops. Okay. Now, we'll let this dry. We will let these soak and then I'll be back. This is why I chose to film here, because this is where I do this most of the time. I just start peeling. You want to be firm but gentle. And just peel it. And it's just the friction of your finger running across the paper that causes it to, to peel. Because, you know, the paper's wet. It wants to let go. And see all this around the edge? That's where the glue got on the back of the image. That's why it does that. No biggie. I usually narf up my edges anyway. So, I do the preliminary peel. Get all the major paper off. And then I usually stick it back in the water and go to the next one. And I'll do these at least about a dozen in a, at a time because it's, um, it's something that's easy to do assembly line fashion and all of this icky stuff that I'm peeling off I will when I'm done I usually just get a paper towel scoop it up throw it away some of it does go down the drain but it is first of all it's paper it wants to disintegrate and eventually will and it's very small and believe me when I tell you I have flushed things much bigger than this <laughs> So I don't really worry about it clogging up my sink drain. I think, you know, even though it's not as big as the potty drain, I think it can handle it. <laughs> but I do throw those in the trash. Um, this is the one I was curious about. I don't know what's going to happen here. This was on a magazine page that I had altered with some kind of chemical. And then I jelly printed over it. I didn't see a whole lot of color coming off. Looks like there was a little bit. Oh, gosh, that might actually work. Okay. Keep going. Remember not to freak out if you rip it. Now if you start peeling and you've no, you notice that they are extremely delicate and are ripping very easily, that means you don't have enough layers of gel medium on there. Let's go ahead and revisit these. Now this is part of the trick to removing the paper haze. Sometimes this is all you need to do and your image will be perfectly clear. Sometimes not. You get out your old toothbrush. You wet it and then you gently 
scrub. Yes, you can scrub a hole right in it. Yes, you can scrub the ink right off of it. So just do it carefully. Now, that appears to be completely done, but we won't know for sure until it's dry, because that's when the hazies come out. These will keep for quite a while. <clears throat> Some of those ones that I showed you earlier that I had on the ATCs, they were probably seven or eight years old, at least. So, they have a good shelf life. I wanted to show you my super secret extra special haze removing technique, but <laughs> since we used the toothbrush, all of our images have come out really clean. <laughs> the super secret technique is a household degreaser. Um, this is my favorite. LA is totally awesome. I think I've talked about this before. You can get it at the 99 cent store for 99 cents. Or if you're a big spender, you can get it at the Dollar Tree and pay that extra penny. But, you know, that's just a foolish waste of all that money, if you ask me. So, 99 cent degreaser. Um, you can use something like 409 or Simple Green or any kind of general spray degreaser. You're going to have to test it to make sure that it doesn't lift the ink and that it doesn't melt the medium. And this one works great. It doesn't do either of those things. It just helps to dissolve the paper, but it doesn't hurt the um, gel or the ink at all. So that's, oh, where'd that come from? Probably my hair. <laughs> so spray it on and use the toothbrush. And we'll get that remaining haze off of there. They all look clean when they're wet, so you have to let it dry to be able to tell if it really did get all the stuff off. But yeah, it looks like it did. So that's the extra secret special super paper haze moving technique. Use a household cleaner, non-solvent degreaser. That's all there is to it. Okay, the last thing I'm going to show you is a regular instant gel medium transfer where you take a, this, in this case you can use one of your um, printouts from your home computer on an inkjet printer. You can use your inkjet printouts and transfer the image onto a different uh, substrate. This is a lot of trial and error and expect a whole lot of error <laughs> because it's one of those things where there is a sweet spot and just the slightest bit of variance in either direction and it's not going to come out. And there's really, I can't give you any formula for how to get it to turn out exactly right every time because there isn't one. It's just too, there's too many variables. Okay, so let's start out with some inkjet printouts. These you do need to trim around them, trim off the white, because what this does is it not only transfers the ink to the paper, it transfers the top layer of paper that the ink is soaked into. That, that top really fine layer of paper is transferred. So if it's just white in the background, then it's going to transfer white paper onto here. And if that's not the look you want, then you need to fussy cut it. If you're like me, <laughs> you, you avoid fussy cutting at all costs. What I do when I print out stuff, especially flowers like this, 
I'll print a whole bunch on one sheet, you know, and as soon as they come out of the printer, you can't really tell because I've already transferred it, but I will take some either markers or watercolors. On this one, I took a light blue watercolor, and I just watercolored all around it, <laughs> and I did that on the whole page of flowers. That way, when I go to cut them out, I don't have to fussy cut. I can just give it a general cut, and I don't have a white edge around it. I have blue, which makes it look kind of like on purpose. So that's, <laughs> that's how I cheat and get out of fussy cutting sometimes. I did it with this one, although I did trim this one pretty close. But you can see the blue around it. That was watercolor. The rest of them, I didn't bother. That one I had fussy cut it a long time ago. See, this one, that's my technique, but that's the way it was printed. So, anyway, let's see. Let's see how many of these I have to do before I can get it right. It's usually several. So, all right, we need a surface to transfer on, and I've just chosen some uh, book pages. These are dictionary pages. We need some gel medium. I usually prefer a soft gel medium and a matte finish. You can use whatever you got, whatever finish, whatever weight. You can make it work. All I have is regular gel matte finish, so I added a little bit of water to it so that it wasn't quite so firm. And what you're going to do is you're going to brush on not a thick layer, but not a thin layer. Can you see what I was talking about, all those variables? Just kind of average and even. That's important. Lay your printed image face down. And here's where I always screw up. I either over burnish or I under burnish. I usually use a key card. I kind of burnish the excess uh, gel medium out. But you want to be careful because you don't want to burnish all of the medium out from under. If you use this to squeegee it all out, it's not going to transfer. So I do that you know, careful little squeegee in the beginning, but then I lay it flat and burnish like this. There is a tool that you can buy specifically for this, but I don't have that tool. Now let's see if I got any work. Oh, nope, nothing's transferred yet. It's right about here where I start screwing up. Yeah, I overburnished. And I underburnished. I did a little of both. That's interesting. Usually I do one or the other. Okay. Try again. See, if you're doing this and you need to do transfer an image onto a finished something where, you know, you've got one shot to get it right, you really should print yourself out five or six practice images and try to transfer them onto a similar surface before you do your final one. Because I'm not kidding, it's there is just a fine line between overdone and underdone. mostly. She's got a hole in her head, but that's okay. She wasn't a real clear image to begin with, but this is good because I'm getting more of a feel for how much um, 
medium to put down and how much burnishing to do. If you have Omni Gel, which is what we use for the decals, it will work for this too. That's really pretty. And when this dries, I'll go back in and kind of rub off some of this excess paper. I don't want to do it now though because I'll rub her completely off. But that turned out nice. burnished. You know, if you're um, transferring onto a another piece of paper like I'm doing, you might want to go ahead and put a coat of gel medium on it first and let it dry just to strengthen it because you'll rub a hole in it easy okay <clears throat> that one still usable 